Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to this beautiful pristine area of woodland and this abundance of amazing wild garlic looks absolutely incredible today you're going to be taking a look in my bag but I also want to take a shot of this scene that's just behind me to my left here I was here about four evenings ago and got some amazing light I managed to capture a nice image but I thought it might work really well in foggy conditions too. Now, there's been fog forecast this morning and actually it's all around us and I drove through some amazing thick patches of beautiful uh, fog with amazing light too to get here. But this area here doesn't seem to have much fog in it at the minute, but I'm hoping that will change. So I'm gonna go through my camera bag for 2022, take a look inside and just share with you some of my thoughts on the gear that I'm using this year. Quite a lot's changed from last year trying to reduce the weight that I carry every year by just investing in more lightweight equipment and equipment that will cover multiple purposes. Um, I don't enjoy carrying large weights, large quantities of gear with me. I much prefer to travel light, um, but still get the job done if you like. So first of all, I'm gonna take a look at what's in here. Now, I don't always take this with me depends where I'm going and what I'm shooting but this is my drone which is the Mavic Air 2. This is a fly more combo which was kindly donated to me from a subscriber which was absolutely brilliant and I can't thank John enough for sending this over from the States for me to use on the channel which was absolutely incredible. Um, I still can't quite believe it, but yeah, this is the Mavic Air 2, an incredible drone. I've got a set of ND filters in here as well, which is great. Like I mentioned, don't always take it like today. We're in a no-fly area, so I can't use it today. Yeah, that normally sits in the top panel, along with my jacket, which I'm currently wearing. Let's pop that back in there. In the front panel, I usually keep my waterproofs because this area is particularly wet. These are RAB uh, trousers, waterproof trousers, and I've also got a mountain equipment jacket in here. You'll probably see me, if you watch the channel, you'll have seen me wearing those. I'll try and link to everything in the description if I can. Uh, also, vital piece of equipment is coffee. Always carry a coffee with me. That sits in there as well. And that's actually separate to the, uh, the photography compartment and some drainage holes in the bottom should my coffee explode in my bag. It's not going to ruin my equipment. Now, I did a separate video on the bag itself, which I'll again probably link below for you to take a look at in case you're interested. It's a standard Gregory pack that I've converted into a camera bag and it's worked really well for me over the last couple of years. So let's open up the back panel and take a look at the all-important photography equipment. So let's flip that open. Inside here I've got a camera cube which keeps everything safe. It's just a cheap one from Niwa, but I've had it for a few years now and it's not let me down. So uh, let's talk about filters first. Now I've been using the Case Wolverine magnetic filters for uh, several years now and I can honestly say, you know, after several years of of use in the landscape. These have been absolutely brilliant. Um, they're so easy to use. You have a magnetic ring that you attach to the front of your lens, which come in varying sizes for your different lenses. And then you just clip these on. This is a CPL. So you just pop that on the front there and then rotate it. And it all also comes with three ND filters. So uh, yeah, this is a 10 stop ND. So this is such a super and easy way of using filters. Minimal fuss, minimal weight, you know, this weighs absolutely nothing. What's great as well, see on the front here, comes with a magnetic lens cap, which you can just pop on, protect your lens, throw it in your bag, clip your filter on, and away you go. So I would highly recommend these. Um, I can't speak highly enough. There's a link down in the description to these if you want to check them out. Um, but yeah, absolutely brilliant set of filters. Uh, so this is my main camera, which I use for capturing all of my landscapes. Pretty much all of my landscapes that I've shot over the last couple of years have been shot using this camera. This is the Fuji X-T3. I absolutely love the X-T3. I think it's a brilliant stills camera. I, yeah, I absolutely love it. I love the way it feels, love the way it looks, which is very important. 
and I also <laughs> really enjoy the image quality from it as well. It does everything I need it to do. So on the front of the camera here, we've got the 18 to 300 millimeters F3.5 to 6.3 DI 3A VC VXD lens from Tamron for Fuji X mount. Now they also make these for Sony as well. It's probably got the longest name any lens has ever had in the history of camera lenses. Crazy. Anyway, yeah, early signs. I've only had it like, what, four weeks? Early signs are pretty good. Now I'm not gonna say rush out and buy this lens because I haven't fully tested it out yet, but I'm hoping that this can be a mainstay in my camera bag going forward because it covers two lenses that I previously had and more focal range. So before I had the 18 to 55 and the 50 to 140 Fuji lenses in my bag. Now obviously that only went up to 140 mil. This covers 18 to 300 mil. So I've got more reach and it also covers two lenses. So I've massively reduced the weight in my pack by buying this lens. Um, but yeah, I really need to test it out a bit more to see whether it can stack up against those other two lenses. So I'm going to be doing some side-by-side -side comparisons with, with those other two lenses over the course of the next uh, month or so, just to see, you know, how it compares. But early signs are really good. I think, you know, build quality is great. It's weather sealed. Yeah, all in all, I, I really enjoy using it. So uh, and my images that I've taken with it so far, I've been, I've been decent, to be fair. So this is my wide angle lens I use for my landscape photography and for filming these vlogs. This is the Fuji 10 to 24 f4 lens. It's a great lens for landscapes, it really is. There's a newer version of this out, actually, which is weather sealed. So if I was buying a new one, I'd probably get the weather sealed one, but I'm going to stick with this for now. Um, it's got OIS as well, which is great. It's just a really good all round wide angle lens. I've done a full review on this lens, so I'll leave the link for that down in the description. If you want to go and check that out, you can do. Or I dive into like, you know, image quality and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, really good wide angle lens. It goes super wide, 10 mil. Um, so yeah, covers all bases really. And it's perfect for vlogging with as well. Great to be able to interchange that with the 18 to 300. In this front pocket here, I have got a ton of Fuji batteries. Anybody knows that shoots video with Fuji, you go through batteries pretty quickly. When I'm doing these landscape photography vlogs, I always bring four spare batteries plus the two batteries that are already in the two cameras. So I'll bring six batteries with me and that, uh, that generally gets me through my vlogs. In the top here, we just have a shutter release cable and this is a cheap generic one. Uh, that I picked up off Amazon. Uh, it's called JJC, uh, the make of it. And I use this when I'm shooting seascapes and I want to freeze motion or take a, an image at an exact precise time when the waves are coming in. So I just use the shutter release cable for that. It just plugs in the side. Oh, I guess I should mention the, uh, the L bracket I have here on the X-T3. I don't know if you can see that. The L bracket uh, is from Amazon. Don't, it does have a, a code on it, LBXT3, um, but it, it increases the grip a little bit, which is nice. That's why I really like this, this one. It just gives you a little bit more uh, additional grip, which was good. Something that was probably lacking with the X-T3, to be fair. Um, but yeah, we've got the Arca Swiss mount on the bo bottom of the side. So you can easily swap your camera orientation around just by turning the camera over and locking it down on the tripod. So yeah, that is the L bracket I use. Let's talk about the tripod. I've been really impressed by this tripod. This is the Sunway Photo T2840CE. Well, that's the code that's on it anyway. It's a carbon fiber tripod, absolutely brilliant. It's got titanium spikes on it. And I've also got a geared head on the top, which I absolutely love. I've been using this set up for about 18 months now. And it's uh, really nice. This is the GH Pro 2 geared head. Now I've done a review on the head and the tripod separately. Again, I'll link to those in the description so you can go and take a look at them. Um, yeah, some way photos gear is absolutely brilliant. I, I have to say I've never had any issues so far with their equipment. So I would definitely recommend their gear. Definitely worth checking out. So. The fog does seem to come, be coming into the woodland a little bit now. I can just see it creeping in over there. 
So before we uh, get our composition set up here, let's talk about the videography gear. So I'm gonna swap my cameras around and uh, yeah, show you what I'm using for my video setup. So this is the Fuji XS10, which I use for filming all of my vlogs. I also use it for my wedding films as well. Um, but when I'm using it to record these vlogs, just to quickly set it up like this, with the Rode Video Micro microphone on the top of it, it's so lightweight and compact, it's got IBIS in it as well. It's absolutely brilliant for filming vlogs, that type of thing, so lightweight. And then on the front of the camera, I've got my Fuji 10 to 24 lens, which is also part of my landscape photography kit. So I can swap these two lenses around and film both the vlogs with them and also use them for landscape photography. So I only need to bring two lenses with me for both vlogging and landscape photography. So yeah, it's, it's a two lens setup for photography and video. So yeah, that's why I'm really interested in it and I really hope it works out. But so I do actually think that is pretty much everything taken care of in my bag. So I am gonna get my composition set up here now. There is a little bit more mist around than the first was when I arrived. So I'm gonna take this image, have a little wander, and if such a thing as conditions change, I'm gonna come back here. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is show you last week's image that I took from this location, which was beautiful light, um, really nice. Light was coming from the other side, hitting these wonderful trees and lighting up all this wild garlic. So I'm gonna talk you through that composition. And then all being well, um, maybe we'll get another shot here this morning. What a beautiful evening. We've got this wonderful, amazing wild garlic here. Absolutely incredible, just an abundance of it. Absolutely beautiful. Pretty much at its optimum time, I think, for photography. So we've got this dead fall in the foreground here, this fallen log, which kind of gives us some foreground interest and breaks up this wild garlic just a little bit. And then we've got these beautiful trees that dot around the, the background there with this wonderful, wonderful, tall, thick, girthy tree, which I think is possibly a sycamore. We've got also this twisted vine, which leads up to the side of it, which is amazing. Lots of twisted oaks in the background, uh, but I really like the interaction with this foreground tree and also this deadfall, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, really nice little scene here. The light's really nice too at the minute. No mist or atmospheric conditions or anything like that, just a nice diffused side light coming through the scene. So I'm, I'm not gonna dwindle too long on this. I really wanna make the best of this while the light's here. So uh, I'm gonna focus stack this image. First of all, focusing down here in the foreground on the log and then maybe two or three shots through the scene just to get everything from the foreground because I'm only literally a meter away from the foreground through to the background. I might even just let the background fall out of focus ever so slightly. Yeah, what a uh, what a wonderful looking scene. Just hope it comes through well in the final image. Oh, I should mention as well, perhaps my settings. You might be interested in those. Currently at half a second, F10, ISO 160, and we're at about, what, 18 mil there as well with the circular polarizer on, just to take the glare off some of these wonderful, beautiful wild garlic leaves.
So guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video. It's great to share what I've got in my bag with you this year and share these compositions. Please be sure to uh, hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Check out my other online content over at the Photographer's Clubhouse where we take part in monthly challenges. There's my monthly videos over there. We all have a great time interacting on the forum too. So please go and check that out if you're interested. The link for that is above and down below. And please continue to watch these videos. It'll be out every other week shooting landscapes. So until then guys, take care and see you soon.